Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log and today I'm going to be going over how to make the groundwork for a simple little platforming game. I'm going to be going over how to work with the HTML5 canvas a little bit, how to work with key press event listeners, a little bit of collision detection, and just a tiny bit of pseudo physics. So everything you need basically to build this little example is what you're going to learn about today. And I think this is a really cool little example and a great way to get started making games. So we're just going to jump right in. Hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. So anyway, the first thing I do is I define four variables up here, my drawing context, my controller, which handles the control logic for the key press events, the rectangle, which is just my dimensions for my rectangle um, and position and stuff, the loop, which is the game loop, and the first one I'm going to be defining actually is the context. So I just set up my drawing context, I set up the height and width of my canvas, and I'm not going to go too, too much in detail on that because I've already made a tutorial on all that stuff. So you can check out that tutorial. The rectangle object just keeps track of the dimensions and location of the rectangle. And I've also added a couple new variables, namely jumping, which just keeps track of whether or not our rectangle is in the air or on the ground. When he's in the air, I set jumping to true because I check that variable whenever I go to jump. If he's in the air, I don't want to be able to jump again. I just want to be able to jump once. So that's what I use the jumping variable for. The x and y velocities keep track of the speed the rectangle is going from the right or to the right and to the left. So as you can see, I have a nice gradual increase in speed. And by using the velocity properties and adding those to the position, I am able to achieve that nice easing effect whenever I press my button and my, my rectangle moves. So you'll see those a little bit later, but first we're going to go over the controller logic. So this is my controller function. And I've defined three variables to keep track of the key state of the left, right, and up arrow keys on my keyboard. And I have a key listener. So how listeners work in JavaScript is first you have to, and I'm going down to the bottom of the screen where I define my event listeners here. You have to add an event listener to a specific object. So I'm going to add the key down and the key up event listeners to my window. And I'm going to say whenever those events fire, execute the controller.keyListener function. So for both the key down and key up events, I'm going to be executing the same function, which is the controller.keyListener function, which I defined in my controller object. So basically what's going to happen is when I come over here and I press the up key, my key listener function is going to execute. The first thing I do is I get my key state by checking what the event type is because I added two event listeners, the key up and the key down event. So if this is an instance of the key down event, when I initially press my up key down, this event type is going to be key down. And if that's the case, I'm going to set my key state to true. If it's the key up event, when I release my up key, it's going to be false. So then the next thing I have to do is check what key on the keyboard is actually being pressed. And every key on the keyboard has a numeric value assigned to it. For instance, the left, up, and right keys are assigned 37, 38, and 39. So I'm going to be assigning my left value. Say I press the left key. I'm pressing key 37 on the keyboard. I'm going to be assigning it whatever key state I determine it is. So say I press down on it, it's going to be true for key down. If I release up on it, it's going to be false for key up. And that prevents my rectangle, if I press down on the left key, it prevents my rectangle from continuing to move when I release the key. So it's pretty handy. And really, to learn this stuff, it's really simple. All you got to do is use it a couple times, and you'll start to get the hang of it. And you'll be like, oh, I kind of understand. When I was first learning how to program, sometimes the best way to learn was to just copy and paste some code and use it a couple times and then gradually gain an understanding of what was actually working because sometimes it's better to actually do things than it is to just listen and watch. It's a better way to learn. Hands-on is always a better way to learn. So down here we have the loop. Well, that's not necessarily true because you don't want to hands-on learn how to, you know, get shot or, you know, get stabbed or something. 
I don't want to learn about that stuff hands-on. You can tell me about it and I'll take your word for it. So moving on to the loop function, we're going into handling our controller logic, merging our controller logic with our physics. So the first one I do is the jumping physics. So if the up key is pressed and the rectangle is not currently jumping, I want to make the rectangle jump. So I set rectangle.jumping to true to make sure that we can't jump again once we're already in the air. And I set the rectangle's y velocity to negative 20, which will send the rectangle shooting upwards, kind of like the rectangle is jumping. So that is how we do the jumping code and merge that jumping physics with the controller input. The next two if statements take care of the left and right movement. So if I'm pressing the left key, I'm going to subtract 0.5 from my x velocity. And if I'm pressing the right key, I'm going to add 0.5 to my x velocity. And I add these values and subtract these values on every frame of animation. So if I go here and I just say equals 3, and I refresh my screen, you're going to see a much more rigid movement. Oh, well, actually, I have to do equals negative 3. You're going to see much more rigid movement to the left. You see how rigid that looks as, as compared to the right movement? The left movement is very rigid. The right movement is very... It's like he's gradually picking up speed, and I really like that effect, which is why I use plus and minus instead of just setting velocity equal to some value. So you get that nice easing motion when you add and build up your velocity frame by frame as opposed to just setting your velocity equal to your max speed that you want your objects to go. So this is the movement code for the left and right key press events. So down here, we're going to actually be doing a lot of physics stuff. This first line is simulating gravity simply by adding 1.5 to the value of the rectangle's y velocity on every frame of animation. So when I refresh my page here, my rectangle falls because on every frame I'm adding 1.5 to the rectangle's y position right here. So if I comment this line out and save, my rectangle isn't going to fall. And that's because the y velocity is not increasing and you're just adding a y velocity of zero to the rectangle's y position on every frame of animation. So comment this back in. And the rectangle falls nice and smooth, kind of like there's gravity, which is kind of nice. Uh, the next two lines simply add the x and y velocity to the rectangle's current position. And these two lines right here simulate friction simply by reducing the x and y velocity very gradually. So say my x velocity is equal to 2. When I multiply it by 0.9, it's going to be a little bit less than 2. And when I multiply that value by 0.9, it's going to be a little bit less and a little bit less and keep going until it gets really close to 0. And it gives the effect that you're gradually slowing down, gradually coming to a stop, kind of like you would if you were witnessing like a ball rolling on a rough surface, the ball is experiencing friction and it will come to a stop. So if I comment these lines out, you'll see when there's no friction, my rectangle jumps a lot higher and he does not slow down. And I can basically just keep on adding to the speed and he will just, he's just gonna speed up. Now I'm slowing down by pressing the right key. But I like gravity and I like friction. So I'm going to add those things back in, refresh the page. And now we have that nice, good looking platformer movement that everybody likes so much when they're playing a game. So down here is some collision detection. This right here is some actual collision detection for the Y axis. As you can see in the example, the rectangle stops when it seemingly hits this blue line at the bottom of my canvas. The reason for that is this little block of code right here. It basically says if the rectangle.y coordinate is greater than, basically what this value works out to is this right here, this y coordinate right here, 
then we're going to set the rectangle back to that y coordinate. So 180 is the bottom of the screen. Then we subtract 16, which gives us the location of this line. Then we subtract 32, which gives us the top coordinate of the rectangle. And whenever the rectangle goes past this line right here, it just gets set right back up to this spot right here. Um, also, some things we do when we hit the ground are we set jumping to false so we can jump again. Um, we set the rectangle's y coordinate to equal that position, as I mentioned before, and we set the y velocity equal to zero. Now, the reason you set the y velocity equal to zero is maybe common sense to some, but you might forget to do this. When you run straight into a brick wall, your velocity until you hit that wall might be, I don't know, like 10 miles an hour. Hopefully not. That would probably hurt. But once you hit that wall, your, your velocity goes right to zero. You are stopped. You are no longer moving. And as you can see, that allows me to jump up and down pretty smoothly. If I comment this line out, you're going to notice that the rectangle now has some weird problems jumping. It's weird. That's because he's still falling through the floor, even after he's hit the floor and this collision code might execute more than once. So we're gonna set y velocity equal to zero and that's gonna clear up all of this rectangle's jumping problems. See how he's kind of jumping weird? Well, now he is back to normal because when he hits the ground, his position and his velocity are set appropriately and that's what we want to happen. So then down here, these two if statements, this if statement and this else if, just take care of whether or not the rectangle goes off the sides of the screen. So if he goes off to the right, he'll get ported, teleported, I guess you could think of it as, to the left side. And if he goes off the left side, he gets teleported over to the right side. Kind of like in an Asteroids game, where you fly off one corner of the screen and you appear on the opposite side. So it's not really collision detection, just some basic, you know, if the x value of the rectangle is past a certain point, set it to this location. Pretty easy stuff, went over it in the last tutorial. And then finally down here in our game loop, on every frame we want to do some basic stuff. We're going to paint the background a dark gray, which it is. We're going to draw our rectangle, which we do. And we are going to draw this line down here at the bottom of the screen. So it looks like the rectangle has something to stand on if I comment this out. And refresh my browser window. There's no more line and it just it looks kind of weird. Does not look as good without the line. So figured I'll just add that line in there to make things look nice and aesthetically pleasing to everybody. So that's basically it. At the bottom of our game loop, we call our loop function again the next time the window is ready to draw, and we just keep on looping. We keep executing this code every frame of animation and gives us the illusion that something is happening in the screen. Just a bunch of still frames put together. A bunch of graphs put together to make it look like a little red square is jumping around the screen. And that's basically uh, graphics programming for a little web game right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. I hope you go and use it. This code is designed to work in a browser. If you want code that works in a mobile device, mobile phone with touch events. Basically, you just have to replace these with uh, touch start and touch end. I think those are it, touch events. I'll do a little tutorial on that in the future too. And it's basically the same thing, but you have to keep track of where you're touching the screen and, and so on and so forth. You don't have access to all these different keys. I like the keys, so I just did my tutorial with some keys. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I hope you learned something. Come on back soon. I'm going to have lots more game tutorials, more in-depth, some collision detection, maybe some tile-based stuff. Definitely going more in-depth on the graphics, loading up images and all that good stuff. So stay tuned, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.